For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Sane Lamini. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna joins me for Sadna's View, a weekly commentary on South Africa's political scene. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. The Supreme Court of Appeal confirmed the conviction and sentencing of the Tembo King, Dalin Yebo, to 12 years in prison. Now, after those reports, we've heard that the Secretary General of Contra Lesa said it is custom, a Tembo custom, actually, that a servant of the king should serve his sentence instead of him going to jail because he is the king. What can you say about that? Yeah, you know, uh, someone like Pierre de Force simply answers there's no such thing in South African law. But I think we must try to unpack what is going on. Uh, whenever Contra Lesa uh, has resort to tradition or custom, mm. they are actually claiming that they are the only people the chiefs are really the true authorities of what is custom. So while it's true that an individual can't, uh, under our constitution, individual who's convicted of, this ver of very serious crimes uh, can't have someone else serve in his place, uh, it is interesting that they're resorting to, the, uh, to custom. And I don't think that this is totally far-fetched in terms of uh, traditions, customs of the past, because I was thinking, I hadn't had time to research this, but I was thinking last night that in the 1819 uh, war, when Makanda attacked Grahamstown, and then the British burnt the crops, attacked people, and in order to end the war, end the attacks and the bloodshed, Makanda gave himself up to the British. And I think, first of all, he was doing it to stop the war, but I also think he was doing it so that they didn't capture the then regent or king in Glambe, so that I think there are precedents in a time of war in the 19th century uh, where someone has actually offered themselves or pretended to be the king or offered themselves in place of the king because the royal, the, the, the royal head of a community, of a chiefdom, of a kingdom should not be going to jail. But that was not a situation of ordinary criminality. Uh, and secondly, that was not in a time of peace like we are in now. So what we're dealing with here is um, resort to tradition where it is claimed that the traditional leaders are the only people who can really authentically interpret what is custom. Mm. Now, it was never ever that in pre-colonial societies and in other African societies in the rural areas that had not been conquered, it has always been the case that a number of wise people were asked to advise on what is custom. And also custom was not something static, it was adapted. That is why people refer to living custom. When mm. they want customary law applied today, they don't want a notion of a static uh, system that is applicable in all conditions and in all times. So one would be asking of that custom, if it is a custom, and as I say, it may well be, from what I've read of other things, that something like this is a custom, uh, was a custom, and still, still st is under certain conditions. Is it customary? Is it tradition that is applicable in this situation? And contra you must understand, is um, pictures, its claims for tradition in relation to authority over communities, 
over land claims and a whole lot of things, and it pitches this in the language of anti-colonialism, where it says uh, the people that they represent have been humiliated, and in order to recover uh, their um, dignity as a people, it is important to accord the proper respect to their leaders. This is the language used by King Zuelatini and others. And the truth of the matter is that very many of these people had no part in the struggle against apartheid. And in fact, many of them collaborated. And Contralese itself was only established in the late 1980s. Now, I'm not thereby saying that these people are not um, equal citizens in South Africa today. But it does ring a little bit hollow to have them use the language of anti-colonialism when many of them were assisting in the Bantustans to suppress the very people uh, that they are claiming they have the right to have uh, to rule over and to have led and they want legislation like the traditional courts bill where people will be compulsorily under their jurisdiction. So uh, we've got to relate this then to the broader question of the relationship between hereditary leadership. Some of the hereditary things are even questionable, but mm. the hereditary leadership and democratic rule. But now, who is the to decide on the validity of this custom and what is at stake? Well, you see, it's quite interesting that um, King Zelatini and others say, who are these people, these clever blacks, well, that's a phrase of Zoomers, or people in the universities, they are not even Zulus. But you know, the truth of the matter is that some of the most important works recording customs of communities were done by very famous uh, white scholars like mm -hmm. Monica Wilson, um, Isaac Shapira, Jack Simons and others. And I think it's important that we don't uh, devalue that work because I don't devalue oral tradition. I don't devalue what people uh, remember from olden times and things like that. But we've also got to understand that there has been systematic work. There have also been government commissions. In 1883, for example, Cetuayo gave evidence to the 1883 Cape Native Laws and Customs Commission. So you've got some, some important sources apart from the kings and chiefs who exist today. And I think we need to draw on these and uh, no one can say what I say is the final word. But I think it's important that uh, we must understand custom is contested. And we must contest it and advance a vision of what custom means today that is most compatible with the constitutional democracy that we've got. In that situation, uh, if the king has committed the crimes of which he's been convicted, he must go to jail. Thank you, Professor. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's policy about the cultural sensitivity and the sentencing of King.